this legendary man is yet to appear in this mud pit. From the shadows of the lockers, out comes the giant known as Sultan Ali Khan. The crowd goes mad at his visage as he walks towards his opponents and swiftly grapples and defeats his first opponent, then the next, then the next, and he's totally on a roll with putting these meatheads in their place. Suddenly, this Mudahar looking giant named Shami is the first one to make Sultan flinch through the dirt. Sultan, however, musters his strength and makes Shami eat the dirt. Sultan's named the champion, and the crowd celebrates around him. Gan tells him the whole story, and that Sultan will be a champion among the masses. Sultan, Sultan, Sultan. Let's head over to a rural side of India, where the simple living Sultan gets up and starts his morning routine. Afterwards, he drives off to the country roads, where he seems to be known around town and even greets a lot of people. Good morning. Akashi's seen here driven around town as well, looking for Sultan. Sultan then arrives at his place of work, but Akashi's right behind him. Excuse me? Akashi spies on him and he doesn't like it. He calls up his dad and he tells him that he's totally washed up, complete with flabs and all. Suddenly, there's a stuck tractor, and Sultan resolves that issue with his raw strength. Akash takes back what he said and talks to Sultan. Glad you were right. He's polite, but Sultan has already given up wrestling, despite Akash's blank check offers. Heck, Sultan even threatens to swing him around if he wasn't Gyan's son. So Akash talks instead to Gavin, a kind-hearted friend of Sultan. Gavin basically says Sultan would never return to the ring because of a deep emotional scar that apparently everyone in town knows about. It's a tragic love story. Eight years ago, it all starts with Sultan betting on this guy named Titu in a kite catching contest. Loser rides around a donkey with a dirty face. The race begins, and so does this messy parkour montage. They run through a myriad of things, business, people, and even animals. Soon, Sultan crashes onto this biker, so he hits the biker first. Turns out the biker was this girl, who's quite the looker. Gavin snaps Sultan out of it, then T2 wins. Sultan takes the walk of shame onto a donkey. Then he meets up with his father, Sharif, and his grandmother. Sharif scolds him. Then Sultan tells his grandma about his newly found crush. Granny gives him some advice. Then Sultan and Gavin try to find the girl at this wedding. He then tries to flirt with her and pull a Quentin Tarantino, but he fails. He doesn't give up though, so he and Gavin follow her to Titu's wedding. They spot her, and she's quite the stingy character. Another musical comes up, this time Sultan expressing his desire for her. Of course, Girl Alu here still rejects Sultan's romantic advances, but that doesn't stop him from thinking about her at night. Gavin then tells him about the English insult that the girl used on him. Yo, gali hi hai. Sultan then vows revenge. And the next day, they visit the wrestling ring where they could apparently find this girl. Bingo. Found her. And it looks like Arfa Hussein here wrestles with the big boys as well. She's apparently a state wrestling champion too. Sultan simps more for her now that he knows her whole shtick. That's not the end of the simping though, because Sultan goes into Arfa's locker room and confesses his love to her. Well, the fastest way to her heart is to become a wrestler and try to best her at her own game. So Sultan and Godvin go to Arfa's wrestling guild to learn wrestling. He's a laughing stock to him, but he's persistent. Sultan even goes to challenge the coach in a bet. Either three of his finest men catch him and he leaves forever, or the coach teaches him some fine wrestling. The coach accepts the terms and the cat and mouse chase begins. It's like watching Gachimuchi. He manages to dodge them all like an ape and happily convinces Arfa's father, aka Coach Burkat Hussein, to train him. Heck, he even got Arfa to giggle. The next day comes, and Sultan sees ambulances and Pawan, but he explains this is just a fluid donation event. Despite being shook, Sultan holds Arfa's hand tight and donates his fluids. Apparently, his blood type is O negative, which is extremely rare. Sultan is truly built differently, so he confesses his love to Arfa yet again. She's too focused on winning gold for the Olympics, though, so rejection, here we come. She's open to being friends, though. They have a little friendly banter on why Arfa wants to be a wrestler, and she says that she wants to change society for women. It's the current year. Women can totally be strong, too. Looks like this little exchange made them closer, so you know what time it is. That's right, it's musical time. This sing and dance montage also includes Arfa teaching Sultan how to be a prime breed wrestler. 
while Arfa and him grow closer and closer together. Sultan then introduces Arfa to his friends. Word immediately gets out that Arfa's thought to be Sultan's girlfriend, so she immediately gets up and leaves. Sultan tries to stop her by sweet talking, but man, that's an Olympic gold medal slap if I've ever seen one. She then embarrasses Sultan and all the Freudian slips came out. She schools him on being ambitionless and Sultan is left in ruins. He comes home brokenhearted. So Daddy Sharif comes to impart some outdated words of wisdom to him about his recent heartbreak. The following day, Sultan rushes to coach Barkat and immediately cuts the line to join the state championship. The coach couldn't believe it because he's only been learning wrestling for like eight days. So here comes another bet. Either Sultan pins down Barkat's finest state men or he doesn't join his state championship. <laughs> Sadly, this time, Sultan loses horribly, but he vows to return in a month. Sultan then comes home to his farm and his personal brand, Eye of the Tiger. He trains himself while he plows the fields and does some other exercise regimen. He joins another wrestling club, learning more techniques about the sport. Throughout his training, he's improving his muscle, stamina, and skill. He comes back to Barkat's wrestling club with a vengeance. He takes down all three of his finest men. Once again, Coach Barkat happily grants entrance to him to the state championship. Two months pass and all of that training has led to this moment, the state championship. Arfa defeats her brackets and so does Sultan. The crowd's going wild for him. Sultan! Sultan! Then the coach receives the risky news of Sultan about to challenge someone twice his weight. The coach is scolding him because he could possibly be blacklisted from the sport. Arfa comes in to ask what's going on, but Sultan says he's on a personal vendetta to improve himself. What a giga chad. Sultan goes back to the ring and there he faces Devroth, a hulking beast. Devroth gets the lead in points, so the crowd cheers louder for him. It's time to witness Sultan's motivation as he goes in guns a blazing and wins in the end. Guess what? Sultan even gets Arfa. The two are happily wed and it looks like the power couple is unstoppable more than ever. They storm the international competition with flying colors. Medals are won all around, and the two travel the world in style. Eventually, their efforts finally bear fruit because India itself decides both Sultan and Arfa qualify to compete at the Olympics. The news hits home, and they all celebrate up until Arfa collapses. Apparently, she's got a bun in her oven. This isn't such good news for Arfa, because it's been her lifelong dream, but she eventually comes to realize that she'll be alright knowing Sultan will win the gold for her. Despite this, the couple still trains hard. Months pass. Arfa gets weighed down by her child, so she supervises her husband's training instead. The time has come for the London Olympics. Sultan starts weak but he eventually turns it all around and wins gold. Soon he comes home to a plethora of celebrations and even sponsorship deals. He even gets this statue. His ego is growing and growing. Then he slaps this journalist. Arfa then tells Sultan over dinner that the baby's due next week. So she's asking him to stay, but he opts for the world championship in Turkey instead. She's trying to talk some sense into him, but his arrogance just grows even more. Now we're in Turkey, where Sultan faces Riza. Sultan has the edge on him, but Arfa is suddenly going into labor. Arfa fights her labor pains. Sultan becomes the world wrestling champion. He and his team immediately fly back home, and days later, Sultan comes to Arfa to meet his new son. Where you got King of the Ring? Sadly, his son only lasted 18 hours because there wasn't anyone nearby with the same blood type as his son. Sultan has won the world championship, but at what cost? With this, Arfa wants him gone from her life. And now, the rest is history. Sultan collects money for a fluid bank that he named after his deceased son. Akash finally received the full story from Govind, and ever since then, Sultan has lived alone in a quiet life due to his grandmother and father passing away as well. He hasn't even gotten to talk to Akash in many years. Sultan in the present struggles to keep his fluid bank goal afloat, so Akash sees this opportunity to swoop in and offer a deal for his dilemma. Sultan then musters up the strength and resolve to go and talk to Arfa once again in the shrine. He makes his declaration to return to the ring, and now he's going to fight for everything he lost. Sultan saddles up with Govind and returns once more to the Hussein wrestling gym to collect some stuff for his long journey ahead. He makes his way to the pro takedown and Akash welcomes him with open arms. 
Welcome. The crummy board argues against Akash's decision and selection of Sultan, but Akash doesn't give up on him. First things first, time to find Sultan a sponsor. Luckily, Akash finds a rice cooker sponsor, so now all that's left is to get Sultan in shape. He watches how international MMA works, but he's taken aback because he doesn't know anything other than Indian wrestling. Sultan can't learn MMA within weeks, but Akash reminds him he got his wrestling career jump-started within weeks. Sort of bitchiness, man. So the two head off to a remote fight club in Old Delhi, where Akash introduces him to a former best fighter, but thanks to some dope issues, he never recovered. So now, he trains the best. They call him Fateh Singhi, but he's already refusing because he says Sultan's looking pathetic. I don't train dead people. Fateh gives him a chance to prove himself. The next day, Sultan takes a good hard look at himself and his life. He uses this as motivation, and then he rushes for the ring. Thanks to the foreign nature of MMA, he gets absolutely culture shocked. He gets pummeled, but he brings out the champion within and he goes for a stunning suplex. Looks like Fate takes him in. Let's do it. Time for the revival of Sultan, the king of the ring. To make this happen, Fati puts him through the most brutal training of his life. He'll have to adapt to the brutish nature of MMA as well. He even gets Gavin to help him with his training via kite chasing. More and more, the champion begins to come out thanks to Fatih's rigorous training regimen. The Eye of the Tiger's alive in Sultan once again. He then earns his name in the Fence of Locks. Then Fatih imparts some wisdom onto him. Don't let yourself down. Basically, he has to fight himself again once more. Fatih remarks that he couldn't attend Sultan's fights in the ring because he couldn't bear to watch Sultan end himself rather than be defeated. The big opening night is here, and Pro Takedown opens its stadium doors to the public. This is the defining night whether Pro Takedown and Sultan will succeed or fail. The toughest, hardest, and strongest champions are attending this fight. All these fighters hail from around the world. Soon, a press conference for the fighters begins. Akash manages to answer his plate of questions smoothly, but Sultan gets some heated personal life questions specifically where he's been and where and how his wife is. Well, at first, Akash tries to shield him from this, but Sultan answers like an upstanding gentleman. He even gets Arfa to listen to some degree through the TV. Back to the fight questions. Marese here, the Capueta fighter, immediately spits that he's gonna break all of Sultan's bones. Sultan, like the upstanding gentleman he is. The answer remains in the ring. I will answer question in ring. With Coach Barkat watching, he even urges Arfa to try and forgive Sultan. On the flip side, Sultan reminisces his glory days by watching his wedding video in his hotel room, while the newscaster downstairs reveals the stakes of the fights. Total knockout and 50 million goes to the overall champion. Looking like Pro Takedown is also getting a lot of press thanks to Sultan's revival. It's time for the fight. And out comes Marisi to the octagon. Sultan prepares for the start by rubbing some of that good old Indian soil on his hands. Then cue slow-mo. He makes his grand entrance and everyone's watching. The old Hussein Jim, his sponsors, and even Fateh. The two fighters set up on the ring. Then Marisi gets too ahead of himself by flexing his skills and muscles. There's the ring, and the combatants pace themselves and try to be crafty with their movement. Marisi gets the first strikes, but Sultan begins to read his legs. And with the right timing, Marisi gets brought down. But Sultan is saved by the bell. Gavin comes to ice him for the next round. Then Sultan reviews Marisi's moves in his mind. Round two, and Sultan has fire in his eyes. He swiftly brings out the Sultan slam, and Marisi can't get up. Sultan immediately walks away, even before the referee could deem it as a knockout. Everyone is shocked at how fast that was. So an instant replay is shown. The crowd's going nuts. Sultan trains until 3 a.m., but Akash comes along, and from the bottom of his heart, he thanks Sultan and tells him to rest up. Another day, another fighter comes. This time it's with Zane, and it's over. Yeah, just like that. Arf is starting to show signs of forgiveness too. Guess what? It's Akash's birthday. Birthday. So he takes Sultan and Gavind out to party. Sultan's tempted by some women, but they get patrolled by his singing. He basically states in his musical that Arfa is the only woman for him. Next thing you know, he's already knocked out Ting Li, the next guy on the list. Apparently, that musical wasn't just a schizo thread, and it actually goes viral. Thanks to that, he gets the Romeo Wrestler moniker. Sultan's pressure cooker sponsor makes waves, and now even Arfa sees it everywhere. 
Before this next match, he finally gets the goal to call Arfa, but he chickens out at the last second. So, fight time. This time, he's against Tyron. This guy's a wrestler too, and it looks like he's cool with going full-on wrestle stance against Sultan. They stay low to the ground thrown left and right. It's a close one because Tyron is really brute forcing him with a mix of kicks and throws. Yes, you can one body Sultan gets cornered and possibly has his bones shattered by that devastating kick. Just when all is lost, Sultan is yet again saved by the bell. Well, he confirms his ribs being shattered once Gavin comes in to aid him, but he tells him to shut up because he's going to still fight to the end. The second round starts, and Tyron goes for the ribs. Sultan goes for his legs, but Tyron pulls a reversal, which ends with a grand slam. Sultan is left petrified for a moment, but the Giga Chad from Haryana doesn't give up. Sultan, Aiding his struggle to revive is none other than his wife, Arfa, who shows up in person. The fire in his eyes flare up once more and he narrowly dodges Tyron's ground strike. Even though he's hit in the ribs, Sultan tanks it and goes for the infamous Sultan Slam. Tyron is totally blown away, but Sultan also collapses. Looking like the image of Arfa was just a schizo moment because Gavin calls up the real Arfa and tells her the news of Sultan's massive damage. Akash tells the doc that Sultan is going to go for the finals despite the condition. Fight kisi bhi pe then Arfa steps in. She finally meets Sultan's eyes after many years. He talks to her about their strained relationship and all the regrets throughout those years. She tells him of the fact that he might end himself if he steps in that ring again. But ironically, Arfa supports his decision to get back in that ring and prove to everyone that he is unyielding. Sultan recovers, and it's time for the final fight. Before that, Arfa's there to see him off to the ring. Sultan, the champion of the people, enters the ring with the crowd cheering wildly for him. In the other corner waiting is Marcus, a man of pure wrath. There's the bell and Marcus goes in hard. Sultan's barely keeping up, facing heavy damage. Marcus beats him down like a dog and he can't be stopped. Sultan closes his eyes, but he can't bear the image of his late son. So he gets up with vigor. Sultan remembers what he's really fighting for, so he charges forward and begins landing heavy damage. Tired from his earlier flurry, Marcus begins to take the fall as well. He's nearly there, and with one final kick, Marcus is down for the count. Sultan is now the king of the ring once more. The crowd goes absolutely bonkers. Everyone who's close to him is in absolute tears of joy. Sultan happily reunites with his wife amidst the crowd. Time passes, and it looks like Akash keeps his end of the promise by letting Sultan and Arfa open the fluid bank. Pro Takedown retains their business, and Fati's gifted the championship belt by Sultan. Soon after, Arfa returns to the ring after eight years, and then she's ready for another baby. And years after, that same child wants to be like her old man. There's the bell, because that's it for Sultan. What'd you guys think about this Giga Chad movie? Let us know in those comments below with that hashtag cinema recap. This was Sultan by Yash Raj Films, starring Salman Khan, Anushka Sharma, and Amit Sadi. Until that next round, see you later.